Albrecht ran with his men across the frozen hills, their snowshoes keeping them above the rolling drifts. The cacophony of battle faded behind them as the white landscape seemed to swallow up all sound. Normally, Ursus infantry units would be equipped with skis for traversing these alpine conditions, uh, but that was not standard for units assigned to an armored personnel carrier. It was bad luck their chimera was caught in the avalanche. Albrecht didn't miss the extra equipment too much, as the path back to Ursus station was mostly going to be uphill. Albrecht and his nine remaining companions continued putting distance between themselves and the battalion of mad cultists that pursued them. Even with their dark masters driving them forward, they had no hope of catching up to the Kodiaks trudging through the snow without equipment. They would not make it back to Ursus Station before nightfall. Albrecht expected the cultists to try to attack them while they were in camp. Why did they chase us? Surely the nine of us are not worth their time. Well, my guess is they're hungry. Supplying their battle fodder with food is not high on the list of priorities for heretics. But our rations won't feed the scores of men chasing us. Our bodies will, Pavo. Albrecht grinned as he left Pavo to ponder that. After about a half hour into the trek, a sound could be heard faintly behind them, like a little growl, but distinctly mechanical. Engines, smaller ones from the sound of them. They have to get to rock your ground now. My guess is they're on snow tracks. They'll run us down if they catch us in the open like this. Move! Albrecht moved his men to higher ground up along a ridge, doubling back a bit on their trail left in the snow. With any luck, they would get the drop on them. The roar of engines grew louder as the snow tracks came into view. There were three of them, and they were larger two-man models with Laz cannons mounted on the back. Albrecht could see something dragging behind the last snow track. By the look of it, Albrecht guessed it was the body of Alexander. A few men swore under their breath. The commander said nothing as Pavo leveled his long laz and took careful aim. With one shot, the head of the lead snow track driver snapped back as the blast caught him right between the eyes. He tumbled backward as his gunner struggled to maintain control of the vehicle before the snow track careened over the edge of the hill and tumbled down the side. The other two Laz cannons returned fire. Fortunately, Albrecht's men had taken cover behind the ridge after Pavo's shot, but the powerful Laz cannon blast shattered the top of the ridge, exposing the platoon. To have to reload! Fire! The Kodiaks recovered themselves and began firing on the vehicles. They were difficult to hit as they came whizzing past their position. Once they passed, one of the gunners was struck in the back as the cultists reached a more level portion of the hill and tried to turn around. The drivers whipped the tracks around, and the cultist with no gunner stopped his vehicle on the flat patch and moved to the back to man the weapon. The other snow track whipped around and made for another pass, a fresh energy pack installed in the cannon. Pavo set himself up again with his long laz and fired at the driver, who was struggling to man the glass cannon on the flat patch. The other Kodiaks watched the body drop as the final snow track bore down on them, with no cover to protect them. Albrecht timed the approach of the snow track before dropping a frag grenade in its path. The laz cannon fired as the heretics strafed the Kodiaks again. Teuvo. A young recruit was caught dead center by the blast, and he was vaporized. The round passed through his body and impacted on the rocky hill behind him. Molten rocky shrapnel sprayed from the explosion and caught Pavo in his right side, tearing into his arm, leg, and the flak armor protecting his chest. Moments after, the frag grenade exploded beneath the remaining snow track, causing the fuel tank to rupture and explode. The two heretics were thrown from the wreckage as they impacted on the snow. The remainder of the platoon descended upon them and brought the Emperor's vengeance upon them for what they did to their comrades. Albrecht sighed in relief. Once they removed the grisly totems of bone and teeth from the snow track, the Kodiaks loaded the injured Pavo into the back of the vehicle. The remaining men drew lots, and it was determined that Alvar should be the one to drive Pavo back to the station. The men said their farewells, and Pavo managed a stoic grin as he gave the sign of the Aquila. Ugh. 
expect to see you all at Ursus Station for supper tomorrow. <laughs> I want to hear all about the adventures I missed out on. The Kodiaks laughed and slapped the side of the snow track, wishing Pavel a quick recovery. As the vehicle disappeared over the hillside, Albrecht looked over his men. There were only six now, seven if he included himself. The skirmish has given the foot sloggers some time to catch up. We need to make good time if we are going to reach the mountains by sunset. Maybe they will break off this chase, but they wouldn't count on it. Let's assume they will chase us to the ends of Ursus Prime. So let's keep moving. With that, the Kodiaks resumed their long march back to Ursus Station, as snowflakes began to slowly fall from the grey sky overhead. <laughs>